was getting kind of aggressive. I'm looking for security. I can't find security. So I'm just like, you know what? He's either going to get the Don Julio ball across his face or he's going to get this Hennessy ball across his face. girl was Indian Barbie and I'm back with another video. So before we even get this video, you already know what it is. You already know what's up. If I'm an unfamiliar face to you guys, hi. Like, comment, subscribe, all the good jazz if you want to keep up with me because I don't post that often. But when I do, I want you guys to catch it. Also click that notification down below if you want to see more from me because I said before I don't post that often. But you guys need to click on that notification bell to catch it. Just, just click on it because it's me just do it so enough of the chit chat let's get right into this video so today's video is going to be a story time of when i became a bartender in my first bartending job so i started my bartending job of march of 2019 but before that i was a bottle girl not a bottle girl oh my gosh i was a server technically i was a bottle girl but i was a server slash waitress at this um spot i'm gonna call it HH. So HH was a lounge, but they considered it a club because it had dance floor, but it also had like chairs and it had tables and it, it had a bar. The reason I started working here in the first place is because when I was in 2019, I had first started cosmetology school. It was my second semester. Yeah, my second semester of cosmetology school. And this is the same time where I met this one girl in my cosmetology class and her name I'm gonna call her Locks because she had locks and her hair locked up. So Locks was talking about her job and she was just telling me, oh, she gets so much money and she has so much fun. So she was telling me this and I was just like, oh, well, I wanna start working there too. I wanna start bartending. She was a bartender around that time there. So I was just like, I wanna start bartending too. So Locks was just like, yeah, go ahead and talk to the owner of the club. So the owner of the club, his name is Jay. And she was just like, go ahead and talk to Jay and go ahead and tell him I sent you and he'll give you a job. So I want to say about a week after that, I went up to the spot. He has um, several places now, but at the time he only had two places. He had HH and he had um, GT, which is where I was working at, which was where I started bartending at. So when I went up to Jay, I went on, I went to GT because he was at GT that night. And I was just telling him like, hey, Locke sent me and she said you were hiring and I want to work here. So he just looks at me and he's just like, yeah, have you ever done this before? Have you ever served before? All that stuff. And I was just like, yeah, I've served before. I serve currently at, I forgot what job I was working at at the moment, but I was like, yeah, I served there. It's just like, okay, well, you're hired. So you can start this day, start training with Locks at HH. So I started training with locks. I only had about three days of training. And then after that, I started doing shifts. And the shifts were pretty lengthy. They were pretty long. Like the shifts, you can honestly get there whenever time you want to get there technically. But it was open till 2 a.m. So what I would do, I worked two or three days out the week. But I was working there from 8 to 2. So I worked Tuesday nights and I believe Friday and Saturday nights. But when I was working Friday and Saturday nights, those were like the super busiest times. And that's when everybody came in because Tuesdays weren't even that busy for real. So I was working there for about a month and a half, I want to say. And I honestly, I did not like that job. When I was working at HH on the weekends. I hardly made any money. The most money I made was on, I forgot what day it was, but it was the same day that they were showing a football game. And I think I made like 80 something, 90 something dollars there. That was the most money I made because usually I'll make $20, $30. So a lot of it was if you get there first, that's your table. So a lot of the girls were pretty much kind of like, this is mine, this is mine. It was a competition kind of thing. And I do do competitions. That's not what I'm saying. But it was pretty much like a thing like where girls were just like pretty much money hungry. And I really wasn't into that. I'm pretty much like, you know what, I'm used to sections. I'm used to just you know, this is your table, whatever. But I kind of got into the hang of it. So I was telling Locks, I was just like, I'm not making any money. I've been here for this long and I'm just not making any money. And I was telling her the money I was making and she was just looking at me like, what? That's all you're making? Girl, that's not shit. What are you doing? Are you just sitting back? Are you, you're, you, are you being lazy? And I'm just looking at her. I'm like, girl, 
I'm making money. I'm trying to make the money. I was telling Locks all this and she was just like, you have to build your clientele. You have to get these. She's majorly talking about men, but she was just like, you're going to have to get them to give you money. You're going to have to build up clientele. You're going to have to kind of be in their face. She's basically telling me that I had to fuck with them or, you know, you already know. And she was telling me that's how she gets her money and that's how, why she stayed there for so long because all of her regulars and her clients would tip her good because she spent time with them. I'm the type of person, like, I'm pretty much just like, I make my money, how I make my money. I'm not gonna go out the way to just fuck with somebody or F with somebody just to make some, a little bit extra money when I can go to another job easily, not even do that and still make money. I even remember one time I was working there and I was giving this guy, I was taking his order and he ordered some wings and he ordered some beers. And then he was just like, oh, well, what else are you gonna give me? And I was just like, just the beers and the, and the wings. That I'm not, I wasn't, I'm not used to that life. So I'm just basically like, I'm not going to do this and I can't do this. If I have to make money like this, then I don't want to work here. Not all the girls did this and not all the girls made their money like this. But I was told on two separate occasions from Locks and from another girl that that's how they made their money. And that's how a majority of the girls made their money there. So I pretty much told Jay, I was just like, you know what? I'm not really feeling this. I'm not making any money. This environment is just not me. So he was telling me about another spot that he owned, which was GT, where I started bartending at. And he was just like, I can switch you over there and you can start working there. Like, well, I want to bartend because I told, <laughs> I lied. I said I had bartended before. So after my training, I was instantly in there. And I can honestly say that that was one job I really did truly enjoy. The fact that everybody there was so cool. The environment was so diverse. I like a diverse environment. The diversity was super great. It was diverse music, diverse people, diverse environment. Like I fit right in. Had it not been for the owners and the people who were over the spot, I would still be there. But honestly, I feel like it was for the best because that environment started slowly turning toxic. But when the time I was there, I really enjoyed everything. So while I was working there, I worked the majority of time with this girl. I'm going to call her Blue. And I was working with Blues. I thought she was a super sweet person. Well, I'm calling her blue because she has blue eyes, whatever. But she was super sweet. She was super kind. She was kind of like a little, I don't want to say nutty because like she had a lot going on. But she was just like kind of, she was very quirky. I'll say that. She was like a super quirky person, but I thought she was super sweet. So the only thing I didn't like about that spot was the fact that you know, when you go to a bar, you're going to have men approaching you. You're going to have men in your face and stuff. These men were super aggressive. They were super in your face. They were pretty much just like, come home with me. I'm trying to get with you. I'm trying to do this to you. I'm trying to do that to you. And they were very touchy and grabby. And I didn't like that because I don't like, I don't want your hands all over me. A lot of times with me going in, I was super anxious because I'm just like, oh, I know there's certain guys. Because I worked there enough to know that certain guys came on certain days. And then I would have to deal with them. And I'm just like, I don't want to deal with this. Like, and especially because I would be wearing certain outfits. At first, we could wear whatever we wanted to wear. And then we had to switch to these, these sexy referee outfits. I hated these outfits. Like, they were, they were, they were cute. But they were kind of like, you know, obnoxious. And they were pretty much just like super exposing. I'm going to put a couple of my outfits over here so you guys can see what I was wearing there. But a lot of them I had to put shorts over because some of the um, outfits that I had on, they um, were just unitards, like they were unitards. Like they were just like ass out. And I wasn't trying to work like that. He let the girls at the other establishment wear them like that. Like they wore them like that. But I didn't want to walk around like that because I already have a, a bigger butt already. I didn't want to put extra emphasis on it. And the fact that these men were already kind of harassy anyway, it's just the fact that I didn't want to bring more attention to myself. So when I was working at HH, Jay was trying to get with me and I told him I was in a relationship. So I, I didn't want to get with him because I'm already in a relationship. But he was kind of like pushy about it. I won't say pushy, but every single time I saw him, he'd be like, oh, when are you going to give me a chance? So after a while, when I started switching to the other spot, he kind of started switching up a little bit. Like he started acting... I wouldn't want to say mean, but he was more fixated on the rules in regards to me. And it was other girls too. Like honestly, at the spots that he owned, if you weren't fucking with him, fucking with him, like you know what I mean, then 
you were getting a different treatment from when you if you were fucking with him the girls that would go to his office they'd be in his office and he'd be back there with them for hours locked up dark room you already know what's going on so those girls got the extra hours they got the better treatment they didn't have to clean up afterwards because there are plenty of events that i worked at with certain girls who were fucking with him they would just make their money and they would leave and then we would have to clean up the spot that they worked at i felt like it was a kind of unfair environment because it depended on what you were doing with him and depend on how he treated you but it was bearable because a lot of times he wasn't even at GT. He was at HH majority of the time because he mostly wanted to focus on HH. That was his big business. So it was kind of like a relief because I didn't have to deal with him as much. But when he did show up, he was just super, super strict on us. Like he would sit at the bar. He'd have his friends sit at the bar and he would just be watching us. And if we made even like the littlest mistake, he'd be like, why'd you do that? Why'd you make that drink like that? Or if we heard, or if we said something to a customer, hey, we don't have this liquor, we don't have this, we can't make that. Yes, we can. He'll be, he'll hear, overhear us. He'll be like, yes, we can. We can make this. We can do that. Why are you telling him that? One thing I didn't like about working there or working around Jay was that he made himself easily accessible to everybody. Everybody was his friend. So everybody wanted to get the friend treatment and they wanted to do shit like they wanted to play music on a jukebox without actually putting money in it which you can't do you can do but it's it's a jukebox for a reason you're supposed to be putting money in it are they wanting to play pool they want, if we had like a long list of people waiting in line for pool they wanted to jump the line they wanted a table immediately instead of waiting in line like everybody else and then they would even ask for free food and drinks or they wouldn't pay for their shit and jay would pick and choose who he'd want to consider his friend because he'll have certain people, I had a situation once where this guy comes in, he's fixing on the building and he's just all like, hey, I want, can I get a free drink, a shot and um, some Coke and whatever, some fries or whatever. So I was like, okay, so he told this and he was just like, oh, Jay, that's my cousin. Um, I'm working on this building for him. And he said, I can have whatever I want. If I want to order a little something, I can get a little something for free. So Jay shows up later and he's just like, what was this tab open for? I was like, oh yeah, that's your cousin. And he was just like, who? And I was like, the guy was working on the building. He said he was your cousin. And he said he gets free stuff from time to time. And then he was just like, man, why would you listen to him? Like, that's not even my cousin. Like, why didn't you ask me? Why didn't you tell me about that? Like, you're not supposed to be giving free, free food or free drinks to anybody. So I was like, okay, cool, my bad, whatever. So after that, I started telling everybody, nah, you gotta pay. He starts getting mad because he's just like, so-and-so doesn't have to pay. I never make so-and-so pay. Put that on the tab. Or so-and-so, why are you making so-and-so pay? And I'm just like, you just told me before that no one gets anything for free. And now it's just certain people that you let people, that you let get stuff for free. So you're picking and choosing. So how am I supposed to know if you're picking and choosing? So it was a lot of that. It was a lot of people calling him, telling him every little thing. And then he would call us and he'd be like, why so-and-so said this? Why did so-and-so say that? And it was a lot of people who were trying to, guess, I guess, get us in trouble, I guess, because they couldn't get their way. It was a lot of grown ass people who basically couldn't get their way and they were upset. So they were trying to make it seem like we were doing something bad when we really weren't, we are just doing our job. So there were a couple of situations where stuff got rowdy. I need to make some separate story times because a lot of shit did happen in that bar and I have plenty of story times. So there were a lot of different situations where we would need security and security would be nowhere to be found on certain days because we had like three or four set securities but they worked on certain days. So I know certain days when I worked with certain security, I'd be like, if something goes down, I'm like, oh yeah, so-and-so got it. I ain't even gotta be scared because so-and-so got a gun, he got it. But there are other days where I'm just like, okay, where's security at? Because shit's about to go down or I need this or I need to handle the situation and security's nowhere to be found. So it was me and Blue working this one particular night. And on this particular night, it was dead at first because it was a Saturday night. I forgot, there was something going on, but it was super slow at first. And at first we were just talking about, oh, well, if it stays this slow, because it was slow around nine something, 10 something. Yeah, it was super slow around nine something, 10 something. And we were just like, oh, if it stays this slow until 11 something, then we can just totally like close up like around 12. When we said that about a big group of people came in 
and there's a club next door it's like a little mini club next door and people frequent both clubs at the same time at some times so you'll have people who go into that one club and come over here and then vice versa so on this particular night it was a group of people who came in they were super rowdy they were super drunk because they were drunk from at the other bar so it was this particular guy who was being the most rowdiest out of all of them and he was just being super loud super obnoxious he was yelling he was just being super crazy and at the same time he had his girlfriend i guess they were going through something they were fighting about something whatever but he was being super aggressive in her face he was calling her the b word he was saying get the f out my face because they were arguing about something i just don't know what it was but they were he was constantly like pushing he was even putting his hands on her he was pushing her out the way and his friends were trying to get in between it and her friends were trying to get in between it but i was just like yeah this is too much so i was looking for security security was nowhere to be found and so i went next door because usually we take food orders next door but usually security's over there so i go over there and i'm just like hey security you know it's getting kind of rowdy so he was like okay cool yeah i'll be over there in a second so i'm like okay cool so i go back to gt and i'm working and not even 15 minutes later this guy is in our face the same guy he's screaming in our face and he's just like where's the rest of my beer we were just like what are you talking about sir like because we were serving him bud lights all night he was buying them two at a time so he was super drunk i don't even know how drunk he was from the other spot i don't know what he was on i don't know what he was drinking all i know is that we had gave him like about four or five beers at that point because he was just guzzling them down so he proceeds to yell at us he was like i need my fucking beer i need my fucking beer mind you he had beer in front of him and we were just like is that not your beer and he was just like no i had two beers i had two bud lights i need my other beer right now so we were telling him okay sir we can get you another beer just to shut him up we we're like we can get you another beer but well i said this i was like but you can't be talking to us like this and you can't just be yelling and screaming like that and he was just like, I can do whatever I want. I'm a da 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 da. He was just yelling, screaming, getting loud. And then like we're standing there, me and Blue are standing there, and it's like he's about to come around the counter. I started to reach down because there was like about when we um get rid of our liquor bottles, when we empty our liquor bottles, if we finish them, we put the bottles at the bottom underneath the sink. I started reaching underneath the pail and I started reaching for a bottle. I was trying to reach for the biggest bottle I could find because I'm just like, look, this dude's getting kind of aggressive. I'm looking for security. I can't find security. So I'm just like, you know what? He's either going to get the Don Julio bottle across his face or he's going to get this Hennessy bottle across his face. If this guy comes any closer, I'm about to whip this bottle out and I'm about to take it across his head. And whatever happens, happens. Because I'm not about to let somebody put their hands on me. Especially if they get super drunk. You don't know what a drunk person is going to do. So I didn't know him. I didn't know what he was going to do. So I had to protect myself. So I go and I'm looking for security. I go tell security that I'm, I'm telling him I'm angry at this point. I'm like, look, can you please get these people out of this bar? This guy is going crazy and I'm, I can't handle this. And he was just like, yeah, I'm about to come over there. I'm about to come over there right now. Meanwhile, he'd said that about 20, 30 minutes ago. I'm continuously telling Blue, look, they got to leave. We got to close this shit down because I'm not about to have this shit go on. I'm not about to have him getting more belligerent. We're not serving him any more drinks. We're not serving the people he's with any more drinks. We're going to get rid of this crowd completely. So one of Jay's friends, he overhears me. And because his friends come in from time to time and they look over the bar if he's at HH. So he comes around and he hears me. He's just all like, who's going? Who's leaving? I was like, that guy's leaving. He's being super loud. He's being super disrespectful. I'm not having that. And then Jay's friend proceeds to tell me, oh, he's not getting kicked out because everybody's money's good here. And I honestly don't know if he was there around the time when the guy was in my face and when he was yelling. But just for me to be like, look, I work here and this guy's making me uncomfortable and he's yelling. He's being super aggressive and super violent. And all you want to say is everybody's money's money's good here. So after that, I was like, oh, hell no. Like, I'm, I, I'm not taking this shit. Like, I, I was super pissed off. And I was actually supposed to come in that morning, but he actually sent me a text. He sent me this other girl a text. He sent this other girl, me, a group text. And he was just basically saying, because the other girl, her name is I love her. Awesome. Pretty girl. She's super sweet. But I was working with her that same day, but she actually left early because she got into it with Jay's friend. He was being disrespectful to her. So he sent me and I'm the same text. 
And I'm just going to put it right here for you guys to read. But basically, he was just saying that the events that unfolded that night were unprofessional. And he basically was saying that me and Don were suspended for two weeks because we were being super unprofessional and we shouldn't act like that at work. Meanwhile, Jay's friend is over here cussing out Dime and I'm getting cussed out and yelled at by a grown ass man. And that's not unprofessional, but me responding that they have to get kicked out because I wasn't gonna accept the disrespect, that's unprofessional. So I was basically like, okay, well, this and this happened. And he was just like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. You gotta be professional at all times. And you should've got security, which was what I was trying to do. Or he said, get his friend, which his friend was no help either because his friend wasn't going to kick him out because he said, everybody's money's good here. So after them two weeks, I was really debating going back because I was just like, you know, what? I'm not at this point. If Because I've had plenty of other experiences working there where the same thing happened, not to that degree, but I was basically disrespected and Jay was just like, oh, well, that's unprofessional. You have to act like this. You can't say that. You can't say that. And I just can't take people disrespecting me and not even me being super rude about me standing up for myself. And then I get in trouble because I stood up for myself. So after hearing everything, I was just like, you know what? I think I'm done with this place. Like it was good while it lasted, but I honestly can't keep on getting disrespected in this toxic ass environment. That's the end of my story for my first bartending job. And I've actually had other several jobs after that, but this is like the first story that started it all. Thank you for watching to the end. If you guys stuck it out to the end, I appreciate y'all so much. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos and supporting me. It really does mean a lot to me. You guys commenting, you guys liking, you guys liking my stories because I have a lot of stories to tell, a lot more stories to tell. So I'm so glad you guys are just interested in them. I hope you guys have a blessed and wonderful day and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.